And so for int index is equal to zero, we know index is starting from zero. That's what we're going to use to refer to the element in the array. As long as the index is less than the charge account, charge account numbers dot length, as long as the index, as long as this number, the index at any point is less than the length of this array, of this array. Because we know that the index, okay, of this, uh, this array which of 18 elements is either going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 17. The last index of this 18 number element, uh, sorry, sorry, 18 of this, uh, of this array with 18 elements, the last index of this, uh, of this array with 18 elements is 17, one less than the length of the array. And so if the index at any point is less than the length of the array, which is 18, right? If it's from zero, starting from zero, all the way to, you know, the length, all the way to, if it's less than the length of the array, from zero, and if it's less than the length of the array, then that shows that it's a valid index. That means that that index can refer to any element in the array. So if you are dealing with the index five, you're dealing with zero, one, two, three, four, five. You're dealing with this particular element because the elements are referenced by the index. They're represented by the, ind the indices, right? If we're dealing with index 15, then we're dealing with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then we are dealing with this particular element here. If we're dealing with index 2, then the element we are, we, are, we are referring to is 0, 1, 1, 2. And so 2, this is index. This element here has an index of 0, 1, 2, right? Has an index of 2, right? So basically, th th that's what it is. We're making sure over here that this, the index at, at any point in time is a valid index in this array. And we know that the last index of, or the last, sorry, the last element of this array is always going to have an index one less than the length of the array. That's what we're doing here, checking to make sure the index is valid. All right, so if, you, if, if you've been able to make sure the index is valid, right, do what's in the loop, which we're about to type. And before you iterate again, before you come back up and check to see if index is less than charge accounts numbers dot length, add one, okay, add one to index. All right, and so we have a mechanism over here for, for going through each, okay, or for accessing each element in the array. Because we are starting from zero, which is this element. Index is going to be zero, and we are, we are going to use that to refer to this element. And then we'll, we'll check to see if the elements or the sorry the index is less than the charge account numbers dot length, the length of the array. We're checking to see if it's less, less than the length account of the array. Sorry, I'm mixing words here. We're checking to see if the index is less than the length of the array. And if it is, let's do what's in the loop. And before we come back to check to see if index is less than charge account numbers dot length, let's add one to index. And then so index is going to be one. That means we're accessing this element, right? Because this element has an index of one. So on and forth. We have a mechanism for basically move, accessing each of these elements, and so that's the mechanism you're going to you're going to use to compare this each of the numbers with the number given, and to see if there's a match. And if there's a match, that means that number is, is in the array. If there's no match, and that number that then that number is not in the array, and so return false. If there's a match, return true. All right. So at any time we want to create an if statement, right, in the for loop. Anytime we add trade, we we check. Because the very first time we'll be dealing with this element, second time we'll be dealing with this element, all the way to the last element, last element. And so if at any time, right, the number given is equal to, is equivalent to, I'm using double equals to compare. If I use one equal sign, I'm assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. And I don't want to do that. I want to just compare, to, to ask to say, is what on the right equal to what on the left? And this is either going to be true or false. That's what I'm, I'm doing over here. If the number given is double equal to the this particular element that we are on, the index is going to refer to that element. When the index at this point is going to be zero. And so we want to we want the element at hold so hold, hold on a second. Sorry, I was typing something else. We want the element at in index zero right the very first time and so we are re we, we are using i'm using curly um, uh, so square brackets and i'm using the, i'm referring to the index over here and so the very first time index would be zero and so all i'm doing is i'm checking to see if the number given is exactly equal to the very first element in the array i'm checking to see if it's equal to because index would be zero the very first time and so in, in the and so this charge account array 
with an index of zero is this first element. I'm checking to see if this, if this first element is equal to the number given. And this second time, index will iterate to one. And so I'm checking to see if the number given is equal to the, the, the number or the element in index one of this array, which is this, because this is index zero, this is index one. Second time, I'm checking to see if this number is equal to the number given, and so on and so forth. That's what we're doing here. And so at any time, if there is a match, then return true, because that's what the question said, right? Return true, a semicolon over here. So if the number is in the array, the method should return true, indicating the number is valid. If the number is not in the array, the method should return false. So at any time, if this statement is true, if this block here is true, it's going to return true and exit out of the method or exit out of the, the loop. The program, I mean, the method, this method will be done com completely. Any statement after it won't even run. Any Anytime the statement is run, even once, then it's done. This method is done. Any statement after it won't run again. And so if this block or if this statement never runs, right, that, then that means there, there, there wasn't a point in time when the number given was equal to any of the numbers in the array. In that case, right, then we know that the number doesn't exist. And so this loop will be done, this loop will be done completely. This statement wouldn't run, which means that the program will continue from below here, over here, right? That means the program will continue over here from down here, all right? And so let's return false, meaning that if the program iterates through the loop, and it never touches, it never returns true, then that means that it, it didn't find a number. And so in that case, return false. And But at any time, if it finds a number, it's going to return true. And it's going to exit out of this method and this, this loop. It's not going to touch any code that's below it. As soon as it touches any of these return statements, it's done. And so when it touches the return true, it doesn't even touch this. It, it doesn't touch anything below it. And the method and the loop is done. But if it doesn't touch this return true, then that means it didn't find a match in the array. So in that case, then return false. That to show that you didn't find the ma a match. So we are done with this method over here. And so now let's go ahead and create our constructor. And I like to have my constructor as the last thing in the class. And so that's what I'm going to do. But it doesn't matter where you put it. You can put it before the before the instance method. It doesn't matter. Now the constructor is also just like a regular method, right? but it doesn't have the keyword static and it doesn't have a return type. It doesn't have a return type because we do not explicitly call this method. We do not call it ourselves as programmers. We don't do that. Uh, um, I mean, we don't call it, we don't write code, but we don't call it like a regular method. We don't do that. This method is, call, is going to be called automatically when someone tries to create an object from this class, okay? And so because we do not explicitly call this method, it, uh, it, can't return a, uh, um, it can't return a value. And so we don't specify a return type. And so it doesn't have a keyword static. It doesn't have a ret uh, return type. It, it, apart from that, it looks just like a, a method, right? And so it's going to be public because this is the method we want anyone or any, uh, anyone to be able to use to create an object from this class. And so public, and then we give it a name, the name of the method. No keyword static, no return type. We just give it a name. Now the name of your constructor always have to, you know, has to ha it has to be the same as the name of your class. Exactly, even in terms of the case. If it's uppercase, make sure it's uppercase. Make sure it's exactly the same as the name of your class. In this case, my my class is called charge account. It's called charge account here, and so my constructor is also going to be called charge account. Oops, it has to be exactly, the, you know, charge account spelled the same way with, with the correct case and all that. Apart from that, it looks just like a regular method. Now, when someone tries to create an object from this class, we don't really want to do anything, right? We don't really want to do anything. We could have initialized this field here by setting the values here. We could have. Um, if, you, if we don't provide this, Java is going to provide a default constructor, right? Which basically, you know, it, it's you know, if you don't, if you don't do that, it just sets a default constructor for us. But we can just basically even leave this empty, right? We can say that when someone tries to create an object from this class, it's th that, that that object is going to have this field, all right, because we've initialized it here. And so, this is just there, you know, because it's good practice to have a constructor, right? But if you don't, Java provides you a default constructor. All right, so we're done with the class.
Uh, um, when I look at the question, I think we're done with the class. Let's compile it and see if we have any errors. And so I'm going to save this in chapter seven. I'll, I'll create, I forgot to delete one of these. All right, new folder, right? And I'll, I'll save this as charge account, account validation, create. And then I'll save this as charge account, right? The Java and save this. All right, we have a couple of errors. Let's see. Cannot find symbol. It cannot find the symbol charge account number. Let's see. Charge account number. Okay, the array is called charge account numbers with, with S. And I over here, I use charge account number without S. And so I need to add an S to refer to this array. So compile this, and, and now we are done. Okay, so now let's move on to the program that's going to test the class. So I'm going to make a copy of this question create a new file, paste the question, and then create a program that's going to test the class that we just created. As long as the class and the program, you know, as long as they're in the same folder, they should be able to see each other. They should be able to communicate with, it, with, it, with each other. If not, then you'd have to specify the path of where the class is to the program that's going to test the class. All right, you have to type in the full path. You have to specify the part. All right, the, the, sorry, the path to the to the program that's going to test the class. But if they are in the same folder, you can actually they should be able to connect or communicate with each other and work. All right, so let's create the class. It's going to be a public class. I'll call it. Oops, I'll tell it. I'll call it charge account class. Oh, let's just say charge account test. This is going to be the program that's going to test the charge account class. I'll go ahead and I'll create on my main method public static void main all right and so the very first thing I want to do is create let's see the very first thing I want to do is create an object from our charge account class right all right, so when we create an, um, an object from this class, we don't have to specify anything, right? That object is going to have just a private, this private field, uh, a, a set of numbers, which, store, which is stored in the charge account numbers array. And so to create an object, we use the name of the, ob uh, sorry, to create an object, yeah, from this class, from this charge account class, we, cr we create, or we use the, the class name, which is charge account right and we give the object a name and i'm going to call this let's say number set because it's really it's really that object represent a, you know a set of numbers stored in an array that um that you can basically apply methods on to operate on it 